The infraclavicular block is used for surgery below the mid-humerus. Any surgery of the elbow, forearm, wrist, or hand can be performed under a properly executed infraclavicular block. Many people use a curvilinear, low-frequency, or mid-frequency probe to do the infraclavicular block. With proper positioning, you can do an infraclavicular block with a basic linear probe. I'm going to demonstrate the infraclavicular block with a basic linear probe because most people have a linear probe in their ultrasound repertoire. Proper positioning for the infraclavicular block is important. We usually keep the patient supine for infraclavicular block. We also move the patient completely to the other side of the bed of the site to be blocked. Abduction of the arm moves the clavicle down and out of the way of your needle. If the arm is down by the side, our needle approach is going to bump into the clavicle. Usual depth settings for infraclavicular block in a normal patient usually range between 4 to 6 centimeters total depth. Ultrasound probe positioning in the infraclavicular region is done in the parasagittal plane below the clavicle. I will orient the probe so the left side of the screen is caudal and the right side of the screen is cranial. This makes sense because if I bring the needle from the cranial side on the screen, it will also come from the right side. The first thing we see here is the pectoralis major, and we also will see a pectoralis minor if I move slightly lateral. Here we now have identified both the axillary vein and the axillary artery. The vein is found more caudal than the artery. The artery is found cranial. Around the artery, we now identify our nerves. The nerves at this level are the cords of the brachial plexus. Traditionally, the medial cord is described as being approximately 7 to 10 o'clock on the artery in this picture. The posterior cord is described around 6 o'clock on the artery, and the lateral cord is described between 3 and 6 o'clock on this picture. It's difficult to see individual nerves because it is a deep block, so the important thing is to surround the artery with local anesthetic. Now if we move more medially, we see some lung on the bottom left side of the screen here. Lateral approaches to the infraclavicular block are safer because the more lateral you are, the less likely you are to enter the lung with your needle. Typically we use about 20 to 30 milliliters of local anesthetic for infraclavicular block. Our first injection of the artery will be below the artery. Some studies have described a single injection resulting in a complete brachial plexus block by depositing our entire local anesthetic below the artery. Usually I do my first injection below the artery and look at the spread. If the spread is adequate, I'll stop there. If I need to position the needle in other places, I'll go either to the lateral cord, approximately 3 o'clock, and then lastly at the medial cord, which would be about 10 o'clock on the artery. Complete spread of local anesthetic around the artery will result in a good brachial plexus block. In this image of the infraclavicular block, we see the local anesthetic being injected cranial to the axillary artery. Superficial, we see the pectoralis major. The pectoralis minor is not very visible on this picture. Deep to the artery, we see the subscapularis. The needle has now injected on the cranial side and it's being advanced deep to the artery. And you can see the injection there below the artery getting local anesthetic around the posterior cord. We continue to advance the needle so it injects around the medial cord on the more caudal side of the artery.